To demonstrate the list property, I've gone ahead and created this artboard with a text and some custom shapes. Now to control the text run, we need a number property. I can go to the data tab, add a view model. Let's give it a name. And inside of the view model, I can add a property of type number. Then I can bind the view model with the artboard. I can select the artboard and bind with the view model we just added and then bind the property with the text run and go back to the hierarchy, expand the text layer and select the text run inside and bind with our number property using the pick web icon. Notice we get a orange outline around the text run input because of an unsuccessful data bind. That's because we are binding the number input with the text run. Instead, it expects a string value, that is a text. So we can convert the number property to string as well using the string converter. I can add that and then I can go ahead and check round decimals to zero places as well and then go back to the text run, right click on the input, update the bind and from the data bind menu, I can add the converter as well, converting the number to string as required by the text run. With that setup, I can go ahead and start the state machine. And if I change the properties value, I will change the text run as well. Now that we have a digit, let's go ahead and create a number dial with multiple digits for numbers zero through nine. To do that, I can go ahead and first of all, create a new artboard and define the bounds for the number dial. Its width will be the same as the digit artboard 24 and its height will be double that 60. In this case, I can go ahead and remove the default fill and change its name as well. Then I can bind this artboard with a new view model from the inspector panel and click on the plus icon. It will add a new view model and bind that to our artboard as well at the same time. I can give the view model a name as well. Now inside of the number dial will have different digits that is different instances of the digit model with values set for the number property. Say we'll have a instance for the number zero with the number property set to zero as well. And then we'll have another instance for the number one and the property here will be set to one. Similarly, I can create different instances for different numbers. Now, instead of adding 10 different properties to the number dial model, that is a new property of type digit for each number, I can simply add a list with the same. That is, I can go ahead and add a single list property. Let's call it digits. Inside of the list, I can add a list item like this. And for each list item, you can give it a name, select the model and set the instance as well like this. So we have the first list item for the number zero. Similarly, I can add another list item for the number one, set the model and set the instance as well like this. I can go back to the digit view model and add two more instances for the number two and the number three. Let's go ahead and set the properties value accordingly as well. Then I can go back to the list property, add two more list items and set the instance as well like this. Now that we have a list with the instances of the digit model, we can map them to artboards as well with an artboard list. To use that, we need a layout. I can go ahead and select the number dial artboard and add a child layout inside. Then I can select the layout item, remove the default fill if you want and add an artboard list inside. With an artboard list, we can map the list items to artboards and go ahead and simply specify the list property in the inspector. And then if I start the state machine, we have the list items, the instances of the digit model mapped to artboards like this. You can go back to the parent layout item and change its properties. 
I can change the direction to column. I can change the vertical gap and any other property like the other layouts in Drive. Here, we want to scroll the number dial as well. That is our artboard list. To do that, we can use the scroll constraint. That is, I can go ahead and make sure the layout item wraps around all the digits. That is the artboard list. To do that, I can set the height instead of filling the available space. I can hug the contents inside. That is, wrap around all the content. I can go ahead and set the direction to column of the layout. And then I can add the scroll constraint from the constraints panel. I can add a new one and select scroll content like this. Now, if I go ahead and start the state machine, I can scroll the number dial our artboard list like this. And if you want, you can select the artboard, clip the overflowing content and have something like this. Using the list property, we didn't have to create a new property for each number or digit, but we did have to create the list items and the instances for every other number. What if we could just provide the number of digits we want inside the number dial and have them dynamically generated? Well, we can do that using the number to list converter. I can go ahead and remove the list property and instead add a simple number property again it will be the number of digits we want inside the number dial i can set that to 10 say 0 to 9 then i can go back to the output list and set that as the property of course we get the exception because we're trying to set a number property in place of a list so we have to convert that as well i can go ahead and go back to the data tab and add a new converter number to list all we have to do here is define the model to use to generate new list items. That will be the view model instances. In this case, we want instances of the digit model. It will use the default instances for the list items. I can go ahead and now set that as the converter. I can right click on the property, update the bind and set the converter as well. Now, if I go ahead and start the state machine, we get 10 digits inside the number dial. Now here comes the fun part. By default, as I mentioned before, it uses the default instance of the provided model to create the list items. That's why every digit in the number dial has the number zero. What if we could access the position of the artboard in the artboard list? Well, we can do that as well with the list attribute index in this case. To the digit view model, I can add a new property that will be the list index. Again, the possession of the artboard in the list. I can use that instead of a number property. So I can delete that and then I can select the text. That is the text run, update the bind and use the list index property instead. If I go ahead and start the state machine by default, it will be zero. That is the case for an index. You cannot edit it because it will be set by the artboard list. So for this to work, the artboard should be inside an artboard list as well, which is the case right now. So if I go ahead and simply start the state machine, notice the effect. We have the number, the index used for each artboard like this. That's how we can dynamically generate list items using the number to list converter and access the position of the artboard in the list as well using the list index. Before we wrap up, I can add some styling to the number dial as well. I can add another child layout to the artboard and use that as a container for our layout that is the scroller with the artboard list and put that inside the container. And instead of using the artboard for clipping, I can use the container layout instead. I can enable clipping on that and apply the styling to the same and change its background color. On the foreground, I can add a linear gradient for the shadows and a stroke on top as well. Then I can round the corners of the container layout and increase the width of the artboard as well and align the scroller to the center.
You can enable snapping for the scroll as well. I can go back to the scroll constraint and enable snapping. Now if I scroll and leave, it will snap to the next item. Now that happens on the top edge, that is snapping works on the top of the layout. What if we want that to be on the middle instead? Like the number should be in the middle like this instead of going up or down. To do that, I can simply move that upper point down as well using the margin. Before we do that though, let's go over the differences between padding and margin. Using padding, we can shift things inside the layout that is inside the container. I can pad the artboards like this and using the margin, I can add space outside of the layout like this. So that's the difference between the margin and padding. A quick overview. Now I can go back to the scroller to which will add the same. So first of all, I can shift the top point a bit down using the margin. So adding space outside of the scroller, the layout, I can go ahead and shift it by the height of the digit 30 in this case. And to get it in the center, I can divide that by half like this. Now it is in the center. If I go ahead and scroll up and leave, the next item will snap in the center of the scroller like this. And if I go to the last item, you will notice it does not come up because it ends here. So it will stick to that point as well. Instead, you can go ahead and add some space in the bottom as well for the snapping to work for the last item. Now here, if we add margin that is spacing outside of the layout, it won't work. We want the spacing inside the layout, the scroller in this case. So I can go ahead and use padding instead. On the bottom, I can add the same amount that is half of the height and we get the same like this. So that's a small tip using which you can shift the snapping position of the scrollers like this. If you want, you can create lists with the number dials as well and add them to layouts like this. That's how we use lists in Rive.